कुमार सामी नायक है बोम वाली बुलेटो का रेडियो फिजी टू में पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे रेडियो फिजी टू देश की In the news tonight, choose one leader, says Ngavoka. Raj disappointed with Padarat's online comment. And food-specific issued stop work order. From the studios of FBC Suva, Edwin Nan. Kulavinaka Fiji, a powerful statement has been made today by Social Democratic Liberal Party leader William Ngavoka calling on members to decide which master they serve. Following a day-long management board meeting, Gavoka confirms some members were told to stay out since they've been named as potential candidates for his predecessor's proposed party. Apanisa Wangayadadovu reports it was party president Ratu Apanisa Dakumbau who gave the directive for three executives to be excluded from the board meeting as he believes it's in the best interest of Sodelpa. He can't be serving two masters, right? Left out in the cold, former party general secretary Andilitia Ngioni Maravi, Ratu Tevita Kumai Savai and Gilbert Vakalalambure could only look on as board members walked past paying them little attention. We had a comedy with them today and there is some allegation they are involved in some other party. The party can be, the party can be uh, taken into, uh, into um, you know, the party can come into grief over it. So I'm, I'm very grateful that the... Um, the president decided to do this. Ngavoka says the law is very clear. Members' allegiance and loyalty can't be divided and they won't entertain people serving two masters. While the party leader did not name names, anyone who has been named as an ally of Frambuka could be exed from Sodelpa. It doesn't mean they're out totally. It's just that they're going to be, we're going to hear them. An investigative committee has been set up by the management board to hear their version of it and they come back to the party. But we had to take that action. Navoka has also clarified the Registrar of Political Parties, Mohammed Sanim, had nothing to do with the decision to lock out Andilitia and others. He was not involved at all. I was actually shocked that uh, a claim in that nature has been made. Um, and I think uh, care must be taken when the Registrar's office is uh, implied in any sort of decisions that the party wishes to make. Uh, we simply do not. Um, engage in such uh, uh, matters of advice. The Sodalpa leader has drawn a line in the sand. Anyone who intends to be involved with Rombuka's proposed party will not be allowed to participate in any Sodalpa activities. Apenisa Ongratobu, FBC News. Apenisa joins us live now. Apenisa, what else can you tell us about the outcome of today's Sodalpa meeting? Edwin Ngavoka has also confirmed that Ratu Naingama Lalambalabu has no involvement in Rambuka's proposed political party, given the relationship between the two, that uh, Ratu Naingama Lalambalabu is Rambuka's traditional chief. He has also assured the meeting went smoothly. However, members of the media witnessed that there were some member, members rather, who left the meeting venue way before the meeting was over. And also, he has also says that during the meeting, there were recommendations from uh, members uh, to, to look through the, the amendments of the party's constitution as he assured a dialogue will be carried out on this in April. Edwin. Naka Panisa. Former politician Ben Padarat has been told to wake up and have a hard look at our social spaces in which children from diverse backgrounds, despite their social location, are flourishing in a multicultural country. Padarat had singled out the head boy of a Muslim school asking why he's been allowed to grow a beard. As Felipe Naikaso reports, the director for the Fiji Human Rights and Anti-Discrimination Commission says Padarat is trying to sow the seeds of division based on racial and religious differences. The director for the Fiji Human Rights and Anti-Discrimination Commission states that he is not shocked over the post but rather disgusted. You know, those who are intent on sowing seeds of division uh, they think that they can do so by exploiting you know, these human differences, which should be our strength, and pitting children against each other. Raj says every Fijian child, irrespective of race, religion, gender, or any other maker of difference, has the constitutional right to education and to freedom of religion and belief. If Mr. Padarat you know, had genuine concerns about his children, he could respectfully do that with the school authorities rather than incriminating this, you know, this child on the social media. Why would you post his photo 
right? That clearly is an interdiction of his right to privacy. Speaking to FBC News, businessman and former Fiji Labour Party candidate Ben Padaroth says he was simply raising a question when he shared the picture. When asked why he didn't take the matter directly with the Minister for Education as opposed to splashing it all over Facebook, he stated that he had a right to freedom of speech. The Minister needs to understand that she's a public figure paid by the taxpayers of Fiji. As a cabinet minister, my mother was a cabinet minister also. Huh? They're open to questioning from the public 24 hours a day. The Minister for Education in a statement has filed a report with the Fiji Police Force and the Cyber Crime Unit for investigation. Philippe Anaikaso, FBC News. And we now join Felipe live. Felipe, what else was said by the Director of Human Rights, who is also in Nandi? Now, Edwin, Ashwin Raj is also hoping that those politicians that Ben Padaroth had tagged in his Facebook post can remind him of this changing reality, even if they can't speak out against him because it may not be politically convenient. Raj says that our children and education remain the last hope in combating intolerance and fostering a culture of respect for diversity and difference. The commission also intervened in this matter knowing full well that today the target is on a student with a beard tomorrow it may be on another religious emblem however Ben Padarath has again stated that his post was never racist nor was it against the Muslim religion also Edwin just earlier this afternoon Padarath filed a police report against the Minister for Education Rosie Akbar for accusing him of racial slurs Padarath also claims that the minister's comments have led to his family being targeted with threats. Inaka Felipe. Processed food manufacturer Foods Pacific Limited has been issued a stop work order by the Department of Environment. The Lamy based company has been found to be in breach of environmental protection laws. According to the authorities, there have been numerous breaches since August last year, and the company was even fined by the Lamy Town Council. Food Specific, which has a large range of canned products, has been ordered to cease all processing until it cleans up its act. We will continue to work with them to remedy. We want businesses to thrive. If we have to stop a business or prohibit a business or an operation, we will still have to do in the interest of uh, the wider citizenry and, of course, the environment itself. Permanent Secretary for Environment Joshua Wycliffe confirms the company has been discharging waste into the environment and was ordered to close in September and November last year. We again received further complaints, very serious ones, and that was again January 2021. And again the officers had to go there and do another uh, site inspection and that resulted uh, on the 19th of January with another prohibition notice. Food Specific has carried out remedial work to stop the discharge every time it's been caught out, but there's been no permanent fix. Now it's been told to collect wastewater samples and carry out scientific tests to find out if the discharge is safe. Uh, so the ball is in the court. Once they can provide us the results, the discharge is safe and clean and meets the standards, national standards. And if it's safe to the environment, we will immediately uplift the prohibition order that is in place. Company Managing Director George Patel could not be reached for a comment. A former sales executive of Fiji Television Limited who stole more than $11,000 has been handed a custodial sentence by the Suva Magistrates Court. Chone Silaira pleaded guilty to 16 counts of obtaining a financial advantage and one count of causing a loss. Pranita Prakash reports. The court heard that Chone Silaira failed to provide the solar system to six customers after obtaining $11,996 from them. The matter came to light when the customers complained to the Fiji TV engineering manager that payments were made to Silaira, but services were not provided. Silaira had not informed anyone that the payments were made to him. He obtained the money from these customers within seven months and spent it on food and clothes. Police managed to recover $1,500 worth of clothes from Silaira's house. The Suva magistrate highlighted that the maximum sentence for obtaining financial advantage is 10 years and 5 years for causing a loss. The magistrate noted that Silaira was a first offender. However, she said that his previous good character will have little impact on his sentence. 
She noted that Silaira had cooperated with the police and pleaded guilty at the earliest. The magistrate also said that he allowed the victims to receive justice quickly. However, she said that the act was premeditated and there was a grave breach of trust. Silaira has been sentenced to three years and seven months imprisonment with a non-parole period of six months. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Up ahead, remedial work for Ndavoi Levu subdivision. A new lease agreement for roadside stalls. By today, I Radio Fiji Mosa, Radio Fiji Rosutau. Radio Fiji 2, Teshki Dharkan. Welcome back. The Ministry of Housing is carrying out remedial work at the Ndavoi Levu subdivision development site to minimize risks of flooding. The recommendations were made by the Housing Authority due to high levels of silting due to continuous heavy rain. Kritika Kumar reports the Ministry is taking preventative measures to install channels, sill traps at the site. The long-term solution to minimize the risk of flooding is to build a retention pond. We are experiencing a lot of rain in Suva and that causes delay because the site is all about cut and fill and when it rains it becomes too muddy and of course the work has to be stopped. Housing Authority Chief Executive Robert Sen says the contractors faced a lot of challenges and had to make amendments to the design as well. So there was a need for some engineering design and changes to the specs. Uh, originally, uh, when it was the um, contract was approved in uh, 2017. After the work on double level housing is done, the ministry will move to other four housing projects earmarked for this financial year. We are looking at Sakoda, Wakanisila, Tore, and Tabela. These are the four sites uh, where construction should start at the end of this year. The Housing Authority obtained the development lease of the subdivision from the Methodist Church of Fiji on February 27, 2017. The housing scheme was made in-house by the Housing Authority team. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. The Fiji Public Trustee Corporation is introducing a prepaid funeral trust. The FPTC also emphasizing the need to have a will where assets of people will be distributed according to the wishes of the trustee. Jeshula reports. Fiji Public Trustee Chief Executive Antonio Takala says it's important for their trustee to have a will. Um, a service that we provide where people would like to set aside funds for, uh, for funeral expenses. And they give uh, general directions on uh, how they want the funds to be uh, used when they pass on. And uh, that's how we set up uh, a prepaid funeral trust. So we encourage the public of, uh, regarding our estate planning the importance of having a will and transferring the properties to the next generation. Takala says having a will will make the work easier and will not cause hassle for those entitled. So it will be used and the person has passed on and they, usually the relatives come to the Fiji Public Trustee and we pay out the expenses uh, according to uh, again, the wishes of, uh, of the testator. FPTCL also introduced its charitable and family trusts as part of its trustee funds. Jeshulal, FBC News. Maintenance on parts of Ratusukuna Road to Lodala Bay Road in Suva will begin next month. The work will be carried out by China Railway No. 5 Engineering Group and is expected to continue until the end of next year. Project engineer Monit Lal says the work will be carried out in three phases depending on the weather. Lal says plans have been developed to divert traffic from these roads to avoid tie-ups. We have divided into area 1, 2 and 3. Uh, area 1 will be from Ratasukuna to Buya and area 2 will be from Buya to uh, Monikau Road Junction and area 3 is from uh, uh, Monikau Junction to Lodala Bay Junction. And uh, again, uh, within those uh, major uh, phases, we have sub-phases. 22 roads, roadside stall owners rather, along the Singatokanandi corridor received their new lease agreements today. The two-year leases will definitely benefit families that rely on the stalls for their livelihood, Philip Nekasu reports. <laughs> These roadside stalls have benefited thousands of families since they were built and the new lease agreement 
is an indication of support. It, it's good. There's a uniform amount of all the stalls that are around the country. You would have gone around Kings Road, Queens Road, and we continue to help our small and medium enterprises who are actually doing this. They're quite happy with their stalls. These owners don't have to pay a single cent. However, the only obligation is for them to keep the stalls neat and tidy. They also have some set of rules and regulations in terms of their safety. It's a culture to us. We buy our groceries sometimes on the road to Nandi or to Suva or whatever it is. And, you know, these are fresh vegetables etc. that you actually get and fresh chutneys or whatever it is. Certain places sell different things. However, for a couple in Yako village, Nandi, they have raised some concerns regarding their stall being vandalized. Some youth are damaging the stall. They are even peeling the stickers. And when it's empty, they sit around and bend the walls. The couple also raised their issues with Minister Koya, who says they have to talk to the Turangni Koro in relation to the concerns raised. There's also plans to build more roadside stalls around the country. Philip and Aikaso, FBC News. And now, Friday evening business with Whitney. Thanks, Edwin. Coming up in business tonight, new fuel prices announced. And agriculture hopes to improve sector. Stay with us. Bula FM, number 2 and Seri. New fuel prices have been announced, which come into effect from Monday. The retail fuel price for gasoline will go from $1.99 to $2.13 per litre, an increase of 14 cents. The price of premix will go up 14 cents as well, from $1.61 to $1.75 per litre. The price of kerosene will increase by 20 cents, from $1.08 to $1.28 cents, while the diesel fuel goes up 7 cents, from $1.68 to $1.75 per litre. Retail LPG prices will change as well. A 4.5 kg cylinder will rise from $12.52 to $13.53, an increase of $1.01. The price of a 12 kg cylinder will go up from $33.39 to $36.07, an increase of $2.68, while the price of a 13 kg cylinder rises $2.91 from $36.70 to $39.08. Bulk gas will go up from $2.33 to $2.51, an increase of 18 cents per kg, while the price of auto gas increases by 12 cents per litre from $1.56 to $1.68. The South Pacific Stock Exchange, PTE Limited, has placed a suspension in trading of Fiji Television Limited shares with immediate effect. This decision was made in light of the request made by the company stating that its external auditor wishes to recall the reissues and reissue rather the financial statements for the financial year ended 30th June 2020. This will also include restatement of financial figures for financial years 2018 and 2019. SPX has also today announced that it has approved a request for voluntary suspension in trading made by Fiji TV's parent company, Fijian Holdings Limited, with immediate effect. We now join Sanifa from HFC Bank with the latest from the money market. Good evening. The Australian and Canadian dollars have slipped back from their three-year highs yesterday. The Aussie dollar continued its retreat after topping US 80 cents for the first time since February 2018, declining to just over 78 cents. This is because the US dollar rebounded overnight and held its gains today after following a spike in US bond yields. Fewer Americans filed new claims for unemployment benefits last week amid falling COVID-19 infections. Initial claims for state unemployment benefits fell by 111,000 for the week that ended February 20th, the lowest level since November 2020. The Japanese yen, which tends to weaken when U.S. yields rise, slid to a fresh six-month low versus the greenback. The yen and the dollar are both considered to be safe haven currencies, and the yen's decline came amid inflation worries in Japan. That's all from HFC Bank for this week. Binaka. 
Here the local exchange rates are set early this morning. Our dollar declined against the rising U.S. greenback and the Chinese won, as well as the other international currencies we cover. However, as usual, when it slips against the greenback, the Sangamali rose against the currencies of our two main trade partners, the Aussie and Kiwi dollars. Looking at commodities, oil prices rose, remaining fairly stable, just above $63 per barrel. Gold drops sharply to close at $1,771 per ounce, and silver was down, closing at $27.38 an ounce. The Agriculture Ministry will help 54 new farmers become agricultural entrepreneurs. Receiving nursery kits from British High Commissioner George Edgar, Agriculture Minister Dr. Mahendra Reddy highlighted that this is part of the strategic plan to commercialize agriculture. Dr. Reddy says the new kits from the British High Commission included planting materials, seedlings and other agricultural resources for nurseries needed to help new entrepreneurs develop the sector. Uh, you have come in the really right time in terms of assisting us meeting that particular objective of establishing nurseries. These small nurseries will, will multiply. Uh, we, this is a startup tech that they have and from here they will be expanding and buying more nursery materials as they you know, uh, hook up and link up uh, through the port linkage with the um, commercial agriculture sector uh, of Fiji. And that's it from Business Tonight. We now join Jamie with the latest in sports. Thank you and good evening ahead in sports. More interest from West of Boxing Clubs. And changes for Super Rugby competition. This and more after the break. Hi, I'm Ini from Raki Raki. I love Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Despite a lack of adequate resources, Western boxing clubs have continued to draw in more fighters to the sport. The Butterfly and uh, Boys in the Hood boxing clubs are being well represented at the 2020 TJ's Golden Glove Boxing Championship, which kicked off today. As Vinina Rakao Tonga finds out, both the Singatoka and Nandi clubs have managed to soldier on through the same obstacles. Lack of resources will not stop these boxes. It was tough because we don't have rings to help the boxes to maneuver their skills in the rings, but we use the ground for them to do their sparring there. Nandi-based Boys in the Hood Club are hoping to get in more boxes in the 2021 season. In the next couple of months, the problem in Nandi is our training, um, training area where we do, do our training. And that's where our, the name of our boxing club comes from, just because of the gym we are using. Butterfly Boxing Club trainer Vilisi Kolitapa says the participant number is expected to increase despite the hardships. Once that keeps rolling, they'll be able to support boxes that are coming in from the West. So there will be no problem in that because there's a lot of interested boxes out there in the Western side. 60 top boxes from around the country are here at the Commander Stanley Brown Gym, all vying for the top spot. And also the 2020 Golden Glove Boxer of the Year title. The Suva Rugby Union plan to increase the number of participating teams in the Ascot Shield this year after a successful 2020 season and retaining the coveted Skipper Cup title three years in a row. The largest union in provincial rugby continues to grow. Caroline Itavi reports. The secret to Suva success is its club competition, where they are able to pick from a pool of talented players to be part of the Skipper Cup team. Suva's depth uh, has been the quality of its uh, club games that we've had. Uh, that has allowed us, the coaches and the community, to, to select the best players. So that is something again that we will work on. Suva will be losing some of its key players like John Stewart and Pincha Minima Kutu due to work commitments. Super team this year will be, will be, you'll see some new faces. Uh, some have retired last year. Some have moved on to, for business for those in the forces. 
and some uh, have moved on to other units. Meanwhile, a total of eight teams have joined the Super Rugby Union Club competition this year, bringing the total number of teams to 50. Last year, we had a total of 42 teams, uh, but this year we have an additional eight teams uh, coming on board to join Super Rugby Union. With new teams joining the Super Rugby Union, officials have decided to increase the number of teams participating in the Escort Shield from 14 to 18. This means the top four team from the Koroturang Shield will progress to the Escort Shield. This includes Eastern Saints, Lomaiviti Black, Lame Rugby and Kalekana. Karle Nitavi, FBC Sports. Growing up watching the likes of Fiji's fastest man, Banuve Tambakaudoro has inspired youngsters Ndabe Vimba Taki and James Vunituranga to chase the athletics dreams. The Silla Central High School students participated for the first time in the Interhouse Meet this year and have caught the attention of their teachers and peers. Tali Materkula has more. Officials were impressed with the performance of the two year nine students. We got a good sub junior, so we, we're developing the sub juniors and juniors. In the jumps and the 100 and 200s, we also have some middle distance runners. Blooming with confidence, the two have high expectations heading to the zone meet. I look forward man, for sure I can uh, become from the Google Games, so I can take part with my friends. And my guardians are going watching me in the Google Colleges. I'd love to compete with athletes from other schools and challenge them for a spot in the Fiji finals. They are just two of the few athletes that have raised the eyebrows in the in-house meet today with hopes of turning heads in the triple N zone. Tali Matarkula, FPC Sports. Well, the province of Lao has been long synonymous with the sport of cricket in Fiji. Not all villages have a team. One such village is uh, Tarukua on the island of Vivia, which hasn't played competitive cricket for many years. Akula Dama finds out why. This is the unused beach at Tarukua, and there are now plans to revive the sport, as two other villages on the island, Mambula and Natokalau, are very active in cricket. We have the passion to play cricket. Sometimes we go and play at the school for fun, but we have this feeling of wanting to play competitively again, like our forefathers did. Nadeva adds it has been years since Tarukua played competitive cricket. I think this pitch was last used by my grandfather and his friends. Due to the development in the village, many houses have been built and we ran out of space to play. Cricket Fiji is aware of the need in the Maritime Islands and they will step in to assist. It's uh, part of our strategy as well at Fiji is to look at development of facilities. Facilities meaning uh, cricket pitches. So we are trying to, for those other in, in the other islands to also enjoy the same cricket pitch that is enjoyed here in Super, for them to play on the same cricket pitch as well before coming to Super and play. There are also plans to take the sport to the north and the Lomaiviti group as well. Akui Lavama, FBC Sports. The top men's teams face off in the Raiwanga Interlane Basketball Championship quarterfinals at Ed's Court tomorrow. The teams that progress from Pool 1 are Sing Lane Jazz, Police, Grantham Pirates and Davui Magics 1, while Crossroads, uh, Spawat Reds, uh, TV TV and Mighty Derricks top uh, Pool 2. The women's division will go straight into the semi-finals for the Mbulo Milia Kere Wangarawai Shield with Davui Magics, Bryce Land, Crossroads and Spawat battling it out for top honours. So for right now, uh, the first step is to improve basketball in the community before we move into the clubs. So the club season, then we invite the outside uh, clubs to join uh, the association. In today's play of the day, Fijian-born Ratu Siva Naulango is in impressive form for Bristol Bears, scoring a double in the Gallagher Premiership match against the London Irish. <laughs> That's it from Sports Tonight in World of the Weird and Wonderful later on. Once in a lifetime, Dolphin Stampede mesmerizes whale watches. This and more coming up. Hello here, Tawa. We love Today FM. Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM.
An active trough of low pressure to the north of Fiji is expected to drift solely south, bringing showers to most of the country over the next two days. In the west today saw the usual sunshine and mainly clear skies. From Pacific Harbour to Suva, it proved to be a fine day after some overnight showers. And in the north, increasing cloudiness and some scattered showers. At sea, northerly 20 to 25 knot winds are generating moderate to rough conditions. Turning to the tides, the next low tide is at 23 minutes after midnight, followed by high tide at 6.36 a.m. Sunrise is at 6.04. For tomorrow, we can expect increasing cloudiness and a chance of showers and isolated afternoon or evening thunderstorms over Vanualevu and Tavuni. The low pressure drifting south will bring some rain to Viti Levu as well. The outlook for Saturday, scattered showers and a chance of, rather, outlook for Sunday, uh, scattered showers and a chance of thunderstorms over most of the group. In Fijian Pulse, we ask, what do you think about the proposed Fijian Drua team for the 2022 Super Rugby? Uh, should be more chances for local players, uh, more opportunities, and open more opportunities to everyone. I think we've got the best talented players in rugby in the world. Just look at the guys here that are not selected to the team in, in, in Fiji. Once they go overseas and join a club, they, they, they show their talent much, much better to their teams. Yes, I think it should be done. I think it's about time. A whale watching company in California in the United States was treated to a once in a lifetime encounter with a stampeding pod of dolphins. The sight was mesmerizing with the dolphins numbering in the thousands. And recapping our main stories, choose one leader, says Ngavoka. Raj disappointed with Padarat's online comment and Pacific Foods issued stop work order. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our radio station Gold FM to our poll question. This week we are asking, do you believe the road work being undertaken is up to par? Visit our FBC News website to answer. On to our shot of the day. This was taken by our journalist Kelly Vadala while at Vunisea in Kandavu. The day ends with a soothing, calm view from the island. You can send us newsworthy pictures and videos by email fpcnews at fpc.com.fj or share it with us via our various social media accounts including Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. That's your news this evening. I'll see you again on Monday. Until then, stay safe. Modemanda. Today FM, Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM.